All right, what is up, Reaper team? Thanks so much for tuning back in. Welcome back to my office. Today I've turned it into a makeshift uh, rigging station here. Today I'm going to show you guys how we make our, our Ballyhoo pin rigs up here in the Northeast. We use these in the Northeast Canyons to catch yellowfin tuna. Um, this is really just kind of the rig that we've uh, perfected over the years and what I've found to be uh, successful. A um, lot of guys and girls do it differently. You're going to find different schools of thought. Again, this is just what we use. Don't take it as Bible. Um, the way that we rig it with the pin and the rubber bands, and again, I'll show you how to do that. We can rig these ballyhoo in no time, and we can change out to different colors, different sizes in a matter of seconds. Um, and it seems to work pretty, pretty well for us up here in the Northeast. Uh, we also use these same rigs for inshore bluefin tunas, you know, bluefins anywhere from 30, and we've had them up to uh, 130 pounds on this same rig. So uh, what I'm going to do now is just show you exactly what you're going to need to make this rig, and I'm going to go ahead and zoom on in, and I'll, I'll show you exactly how we construct it. So. All right, so obviously the very first thing that you're going to need is the lures themselves. So the most common lures that we run uh, are as follows. So um, just starting from my left to right, and again, I, I run a whole lot, but this is just probably what we most commonly run. So this is um, a little Islander sail lure, it's called. So S-A-I-L-U-R-E, and this is the blue and white, and this is called the Flasher Series, you can see there. Uh, I rigged this small one, so this is not weighted, so I rigged this one with a chin weight, so I'll go ahead and show you how to do that. This is one of the original Islander sizes. Uh, you can see the line goes in straight through, and then it runs just like that with the eyes out to the side. Uh, I forget exactly what color this is, but this has been a great color over the years. So it's teal and black with the, the silver flasher. And this is also, again, called the flasher series. So we run the Islanders. And then uh, over the years, we've gotten to really like the, the Joe Shoots as well. Um, these are pretty popular up here in the Northeast. Um, our, our favorite colors and what we run the most is blue and white, white, and purple. Uh, we run anywhere from one, three, five, and I believe seven or eight ounce heads. Our most common size that we run and our most successful over the years from log and memory is definitely three ounce. They just track perfectly. Um, so yeah, white, blue and white, and purple. Uh, I'll show you how to rig them. Anything in the three ounce or above uh, weight, I don't rig with a chin weight. And then... I'm super pumped on these guys. So these are the, the Magic Tail Who Magics. Uh, this one's $19.99, but uh, this is three and a half ounces, which is a, a little bit unique. Um, we just started running these last year. These are awesome. So let me take out this brand new one here. Um, so it's got a little bit more hair than the uh, Joe Shoot. Um, and uh, I don't know, This it just seems to run really nice with the, you can see those big eyes there. Um, it seems to sit sit perfectly when it you know when you're um, trolling and it, it tracks just perfect um, and I like them because they're right here in New Jersey so uh, we've been running a lot more of these uh, this one's super cool it's got that blue head uh, on a white body um, this one's white with a little bit of blue in there and then uh, obviously chartreuse and I forgot to mention we run a lot of chartreuse as well so uh, yeah definitely magic tail who magic these are awesome Joe shoots or Islanders. This is what we run 95% of the time as far as uh, our Ballyhoo lures. Alright, so next the most important thing you're going to need is hooks, right? So uh, we use really just two different style hooks on my boat. Um, number one is the owner Joe Boo Big Game. Um, that's this guy here. So this is a five pack right from Melton uh, for $17.99. Uh, here's actually the hook right here. So it's black. Um, it's got a nice diamond tip to it. Started transitioning to these probably about three, four seasons ago uh, from the old school Mustads, um, and I just have had really good success. This something about this diamond tip um, just drives that hook home, um, and uh, I find we don't pull as many hooks with with this. So the owner Joe Boo Big Game um, 80 is again the most common size that we run. We do have them in nines as well, but can't go wrong with the 80 owner Joe Boo. Next is the old school Mustad 7691DT. So these are 8 uh, Here's Here's that monster right there. Um, we run our boat, or I should say on our boat, we have them stocked from 7s all the way up to 10s. Um, 
Typically when you're running uh, smalls or mediums, you're going to run, run them on a 7. Uh, large, medium, 7s or 8s. Um, and then, you know, those horse ballyhoo 9s or even 10s. Um, on my boat, most commonly catch yellowfin tuna and then uh, inshore bluefins. Really, I, I just need large mediums. That works for me just fine. Um, so, yeah, so those are the hooks. Owner Joe Boo, Mustad 7691DT. Okay, next up, obviously you're going to need some fishing line, right? So this is um, Jinkai leader material. This is what I have used on my boats pretty much since I've been running my own boats. Um, I did research and really uh, the charter guys and the guys that were a lot more seasoned than me, this is what they pointed me towards. And uh, it's what I started using and it's what I've stuck with ever since. Uh, knock on wood, I've never really had a problem, at least on the yellowfin tuna that we catch up here and the bluefin tuna that we catch. When I'm running yellowfin tuna and bluefins up to, uh, I'm confident using this on bluefins up to 150 pounds, I use 130. Um, back in the day, I used to run 150 from memory. Um, I found that I get more bites with 130. Um, I do have some fluorocarbon and, and I will rig um, some from time to time, but a lot more money with the fluorocarbon. But obviously, you know, the thought process there is you're going to get more bites because of low visibility, uh, but it's also very abrasion resistant. Um, so if you got the extra money and you're willing to, to burn it, you know, get the, get the fluorocarbon. But uh, I've not really noticed the difference or the need. Um, I just figured I'd show you, but I would say 90% of the time, I'm just running the 130 pound Jinkai monofilament. All right team, so for crimps, uh, what I use with the 130 is the Jinkai, it's called the LI, and this is the single sleeve. Uh, when I first started, I was running the, the mini copper doubles, um, 1.3s or 1.6s based uh, uh, on if I'm using 130, 150, or, or sometimes a little bit heavier. Uh, since Zach rejoined my crew, or joined my crew, I should say, uh, obviously he shares a lot of the rigging duties since I'm up in the bridge, um, and he likes to rig uh, stuff at, at his house as well. But uh, I noticed a couple seasons ago he started using the, the just single sleeves, and I actually really like the way that they crimped up. Um, so I transitioned over the all single uh, last season, and uh, obviously we've had good success. So uh, this is the Jinkai LI. The L stands for long, so the I will be a little bit shorter. The L will be longer. Uh, the L allows me to crimp once here and once there, so once on each side, and it flares out both sides. Some guys only like to crimp once. I like to do one on each end. I get a perfect flare on both sides, and uh, knock on wood, everything's been good there. Now team, real quick, so the Jinkai LI, I was talking to Zach last night, um, and I said, you know what, I really want to just test out a couple of crimps. So I made a bunch with the LI on a 130 pound mono, and I went out back, looped the hook around, <clears throat> excuse me, one of our cleats, and I mean I pulled with all my might, and that crimp is not failing. Uh, furthermore, I will go back uh, at least a decade Running my boats, the only time I ever had a crimp fail, I'll never forget it, we were in the linen call, the water was super warm, there was a, a, an eddy that was sitting out in uh, probably 500 to 1,000 fathoms, it was pushing some filament water on in, uh, but the water in the eddy was 80 degrees, um, so the fish were really off because it was just sitting on warm, but I'll never forget it, we hadn't had a tuna bite all morning, I said, let's just throw this old pink islander out. I hadn't used it in a while. Sure enough, 15 minutes later, bam, nice 70 pound yellowfin. And sure enough, right at the boat, the crimp fails. I pulled it in. It was all sorts of rusted. And over the last decade, that's probably the only crimp failure I've had on tuna fish. Blue marlin, different story. They make mincemeat out of everything. That exact day, out in the Linda Call, we went out to that 80 degree warm water eddy. We found a log. We caught all the mahi you could want. And uh, sure enough, Mrs. Blue Marlin was there, and uh, she made mincemeat on my uh, on my 34 Phoenix. Jumped across the spread, made mincemeat of my outriggers. It was uh, pretty fun, right, Tom? Right, Timmy? But I digress. So Jinkai, Li. So one last note on on crimps and your actual connection at the hook, and then uh, to your main line. Really important, team. Every trip, every time we put a lure out, we check the crimp, we check the leader. Uh, specifically after we leader and gaff a tuna and bring it on the boat before we either re-rig that, that ballyhoo uh, or, or put it back out in the spread. You run your hand along the line, make sure it's not frayed, check the, the crimp. Um, again, you, you spend all the money on the boat, you spend all the money on the food, the fuel, the bait. 
don't skimp out on the minimal amount of time it takes just to run your hand down that leader look at that crimp if it doesn't look right it's probably not right just take the time change it really important uh, it's going to help you guys put more fish in your boat so let's move on next up you're going to need some loop protectors so uh, these right from high seas i like this teal blue i get them in the size 1.5 or the 2.0 millimeter and then chin weights so Really, I, I run mostly just half ounce. Uh, you can go a little lower than that, but just a little half ounce bullet weights is, is really all you need. Nothing special. Um, you can get these anywhere. So, loop protectors, chin weights. All right, team, so just a couple last uh, items here. So, next up, you're going to need some rubber bands. So, size 64 rubber bands. All right, I got a bunch of them. I use these to just... Um, Keep the, uh, the leader all coiled up. I'll show you how to do that. And then size 32 rubber bands. We have hundreds of these on our boat at all times. And this is how you actually use the, the pin rig and, and rig the ballyhoo. So uh, I just buy these in bulk um, throughout the season. Uh, this way you always have them on hand. Uh, next up is some just regular single strand wire. This is number nine from Malin. Uh, I'll show you what we use that for. Uh, you're going to need some crimpers, all right? So you, you can go as nuts as you want here. So I have this uh, more expensive, uh, heavier duty one from High Seas. I mostly use this for uh, our shark rigs. Uh, I find that you know when you're doing these these uh, you know 130 pound uh, rigs, really just a, a pair something like this from High Seas. It's a lot cheaper and it's just so much easier to work with. I mean, I, you can crimp it almost with one hand. That's really all you need, and again, I've never pulled a crimp using these, so that should be just sufficient. A uh, pair of cutters will help you as well, and then the last piece of the puzzle is, um, you know, one of these uh, lure folders or lure holders from, uh, I think this is from Boone. Like all right, guys, so let's go ahead and rig one of these bad boys up, all right? So we're going to rig up this 3.5 ounce blue and white magic tail, who magic, all right? So come through the head end, all right? Give yourself a good amount of slack. So we're gonna use the, the single sleeve Jinkai LI, all right? So through once, through the eye of the hook, all right? Now some guys and girls will, you make, you make a little loop there by the way, some guys and girls will put shave gear on the, you know, where, the, where it loops around the eye of the hook. I find with um, yellowfin and bluefin tuna, we, we haven't really needed it, so. Uh, around the eye of the hook and then back through the crimp. All right, so you've made a loop, you've gone through the crimp once and then out again, push down a little bit. I don't leave a ton of room, just about that much there. All right, and then this is where the number nine wire comes into play. So you're going to cut a small little piece, maybe, I don't know, about, I don't know, inch and a half or so. All right, and then what you're going to do and this takes just a little bit of practice, is on the side that goes with the shank of the hook, there's gonna be a tiny little gap there. So you hold the two pieces of monofilament together, and then what you do is you very gently wiggle this number nine wire into that gap. And it takes a little practice, all right? And you just push it in there. You don't want it to come all the way out this end, but you want it to be in you know inside that crimp so hopefully you can see there so you'll have three three lines so one is the main line two is the tag end and three is the number nine wire all right now I know I'm gonna get critics that are gonna say well that's gonna you know chafe and cut your line I'm telling you right now ten plus years of running my own boats I have never ever had a break off right there aside from the one that rusted on a tuna fish. Blue marlin, that's a different story. Sharks, wahoo, different story. Yellowfin, bluefin tuna, uh-uh. All right, so you've got those three there. You find the appropriate size, all right. Taking my time here. Give it a good crimp on one side. Give it a good crimp on the other. But now what you should see is it flare out a little bit on each side, all right? Give it a quick pull test. That sucker isn't going anywhere. And each one, too, 
uh, Zach usually will, will put the hook around one of our cleats and really give it a good pull. All right. Now what you do is again that wire is along the shank end right where it goes into the crimp you bend it back 90 degrees. Alright so now it's 90 degrees to the shank of the hook and you'll see why that happens later and then all you gotta do now is cut cut your tag end. Alright so you've made a loop, you've crimped the loop, you've put a piece of number nine wire in there and now it's perfectly 90 degrees to the shank of the hook. Then what you do is you take that number 32 rubber band and you just go just like this. So right like that through and then pull tight. All ready to roll and I'll show you guys once we get the boat in the water and I you know I'm rigging up a bunch of bowies before a tuna trip I'll show you exactly how you wrap this around the ballyhoo but this pin will go through the chin of the ballyhoo this comes out the belly end and then you wrap the rubber band around the nose of the ballyhoo that's it team reaper ballyhoo pin rig alright so then what I'll do is I'll then drop this down to the floor and I'll take this pretty much just above my head again I'm 5'8 so I'll go a couple inches ahead and then I'll cut that so now we got our go into our main line and then you take this is the 1.5 millimeter uh, teal shaved gear this I run and then you just cut a tiny little piece here alright so take another crimp through once through the shave gear back through and then you've got a loop and then all you gotta do is loop that through your snap swivel. I'll, show, I'll grab one and show you but crimp that okay Perfect little crimp there, again flared out on both edges, cut the tag end, there you go. So this. So now what you'll do is you'll have your snap swivel that's coming from your main line and then all you got to do is take that shaft gear loop right on through, you know, clip your swivel and then you're all ready to roll, alright? Now team, the advantage, again, so this is main line going to one of our 30s or 50s, snap swivel, shaved gear, ballyhoo rig. So one of the advantages of this, so say we catch a tuna fish on this sucker, right? Ballyhoo's all torn up. I got 20 already rigged up, all right? I know they like blue and white. I know I got more blue and white rigged up. I can then clip this right off in a matter of seconds take that out of commission clip another one right on boom we're fishing again all right the other advantages of using this pin rig with the the rubber band is that say they only want the 3.5 magic tail blue and white man my guys and me we can rig a ballyhoo on this in about 15 seconds probably maybe that's exaggerating but I can rig one up super quick as we're getting our bars back out and then clip this back on and, and we're fishing in a matter of minutes. So um, that's the advantage is I can change out colors, I can change out sizes, I can put another fresh one on in no time doing this. Um, a lot of guys and girls run, you know, wind on straight. I keep these leaders short, again, just about six feet where a wind on really isn't needed. I, I, I've said in prior videos we don't really leader our fish all that much. Um, we just kind of give it like a quick light little leader and with just about six foot of leader you can just give it a slight little leader and then boom you gaff them with the other hand. Um, that's why I use the shorter leader so again between five and a half and six foot. So, uh, But let's go ahead and rig. 
uh, one of the Islanders with a chin weight, and I'll show you how we do that. All right, so let's go ahead and rig up this Islander sail lure with a chin weight and uh, one of the 7691s. So just a little different uh, take on the same theme. So let's run the Islander right on through there. And we're going to throw another little curveball at you here with the lighter. I'll show you where that comes into play. Um, that's something I, I talked to Zach last night. He wanted me to make sure I mentioned to you guys. So come on through the crimp. Come on through the hook. Now on the hook end, you slide your weight on. So I've seen some guys and girls do it on this side. So you put the weight on before the hook. I like to do it after the hook. Uh, it's just the way that I've done it through the years. Come on through your crimp again. Now, you leave yourself a pretty long tag end. And then again, Zach wanted me to go ahead and mention this to you. You burn the end a little bit. And then you just take the tip of the lighter, and what that does, it creates a little mushroom. I don't know if you can see that. I didn't do it perfect there, but you, you get the drift. You just burn it. Here, I'll, I'll do it one more time, try and get a little better mushroom. So pull out a bunch of slack, heat it up. There you go. That made a nice mushroom. Now, you pull that back. So now what you see here is that mushroom is right on the other side of that crimp. I did a couple different things. I've seen some guys and girls put the wire between the two pieces of mono. For years I've put it on the shank side of the main, main leader. Um, I did this yesterday and the pull test won the way that I've done it for years. So just goes to show you that that's why you, you test different things. But yeah, I like to put it on the shank side. And again, sometimes it just takes a little while. You got to wiggle that sucker in there. And be careful. Don't cut yourself too. You can cut yourself pretty easily with that piece of wire. So that goes in like that. All right, now again, with these longer crimps, you can do a double crimp. All right, so one there, slide down to the other end. All right, one there. Pull that piece of wire back 90 degrees to the shank, and there you go. Trim, that, trim off your wire. Okay, slide down your Islander. And what we'll do again, I'll drop that down to the floor, pull the leader to just a little over my head, to just about six foot, cut that through the sleeve, just trim our protector or shape guard. All right. Come back through. Do the next trick. Let it cool off before you pull it as well. All right, pull that back. Give that a good crimp. And there you go. So chin weighted Islander sail lure. So this will sit right in the chin of the ballyhoo and then uh, same thing, you just grab a rubber band, right on through, pull it out, bingo, pull tight, there you go. All right, we're ready to roll. All right team, last step, all right, so I just coil these up real nice. All right, I'll make a couple little wraps around the leader there. And this is where your number 64 rubber band comes into play. Just wrap it right on around, pull tight, and then what I'll do is I'll just grab it just like that, right into one of the pockets, and then what I'll do is we have boom, 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 fold them up, they have a perfect spot underneath the, the bench seats on the flybridge, as we get close I tell the guys, hey, get the lures ready, or more often than not, 
the day prior or the night prior, we rig up a whole bunch, have them ready in a cooler. Um, so everybody, I hope that was helpful. Uh, I know it was uh, more long-winded than a lot of the other videos that uh, I've watched on this subject. Uh, I really wanted to show you exactly the products that we use so that you can go ahead and buy it on your own. Some of the other videos I watched, it's, it's like, dude, what, what crimp are you using? What line are you using? What pound test? Um, I think that laid it out pretty uh, pretty clearly. And then I'm going to go ahead and list it in the, um, in the description of the video. Team, as always, if you like the videos, hit that like button, subscribe, ding that silly bell. Uh, the 43 should be going in, knock on wood, the end of next week. Uh, we had to do a pretty good amount of uh, work to the port engine um, to the tune of quite a bit of money. So um, it, for those of you that have been contacting me about moving up in size on boats, uh, factor in the bigger the boat, the bigger the yard bill, um, the more things that can break and go wrong. So just factor that in. Uh, obviously also the, the diesel or the fuel is going to cost a lot more money. But at any rate, the big boat's going in. I got my eye on, on the water temperature out there in the canyons. Um, there was a really good eddy just a couple of weeks ago, but again, boat not in the water. So the second that, that next eddy rolls off, provided I've done a good shakedown trip on the 43, we're going to kill some tuna. Hopefully we can get them in April like we did last year. So yeah, I'll see you guys. This is Chris from Reaper signing out. And uh, again, thanks again for watching. See you.